13 News reporter Ashton Jones joins us live from outside the mayor's office where the vigil is just beginning. Ashton. Gene, the vigil is just starting. Every person behind me has a candle ready to be lit in honor of a victim of human trafficking. I was talking to the organization that's putting on this vigil earlier today, and they said it's all about bringing awareness that human trafficking doesn't just happen overseas or the way that you see in movies. It's actually happening here in Kentucky. Firefighters battled the blaze whose smoke could be seen from miles away around lunchtime. 13 News' Ashton Jones was on the scene then, and she's on the scene right now to bring us the latest. Ashton? Well, Gene, it's looking a lot different than it was a couple hours ago here at Eagle Furniture. Um, as you can see, the flames are completely gone. I was here uh, around uh, 2 o'clock, and there was a lot of very dense smoke. People were sending us pictures and messages saying that they could see the fire from miles away. 13 News reporter Ashton Jones continues to follow this story. We're going to go live to her again right now. Hi, Ashton. That's right, Laura. The FedEx truck carrying the first doses of the vaccine arrived here at the medical center earlier today. This is a part of the first phase of vaccine distribution. The global learning has been an essential part of WKU's curriculum, especially within the Honors College. But due to COVID, many students have missed out on this rite of passage. Tracy says the drugs led to a record, and when employers open that up, she said they wouldn't even give her a chance. They may not be able to walk alongside each other this year, but they are able to ride together, and you'll see each of them wearing one of these shirts in solidarity. The damage is going far beyond just the physical impact that we're seeing outside of Nashville. It's actually affecting us here in Bowling Green at businesses like this one. These bags of toys around me are the ones that weren't able to get picked up today, but the families will be able to come back the next few weekends. And that starts with picking up your phone and dialing WKU's COVID-19 hotline. According According to WKU's 2019 fact book, there were 729 Hispanic students on the campus. That makes up 4.1% of undergraduate and 3.1% of graduate students. 17 years of children have played in these classrooms, but for the owner, it's not just a daycare, it's actually a calling. Normally you would see people physically stuffing this bus, but this year in order to maintain social distancing, they've decided to do a drive through drop off. This key will get you in the door, but once you're there, what protections do you have? In Bowling Green, it may not be as many as you think. Disposable masks like this one should be replaced regularly, and any cloth mask should be washed after use. But one thing's for sure, you should never microwave your mask. Home is supposed to be your safe space, but for one in five women and one in 12 men, they'll be physically abused by their domestic partner. Whether it's virtual, in person, or homeschooling, the parents say sometimes it's just too much. The United States Health and Human Services website is a good way to explore which kinds of programs and services are available to you. But for Blake, who would be off his parents' insurance and without a job, he would have few options. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Gene Burke. Detention centers are taking a hard hit during this pandemic. The Barron County Jail has 63 positive cases out of 216 inmates. 13 News reporter Ashton Jones talked with the detention center and a mother who says her daughter is not getting proper care. I know, I know they're in there for a reason. But still, they're still human beings. A concerned mother talks about her daughter in the Barron County Detention Center. She's asked to remain anonymous to protect her daughter from backlash, but she says she's worried for her health as her daughter has COVID-19. It's very upsetting to me. It's very upsetting for the families. You know, they're out here and their children's in there. They're more worried to death about them because they're not getting any medical treatment. She and her daughter talk on the phone often. The daughter says the only treatment is Tylenol and she doesn't always get hers. But the jailer says they haven't had any medical treatment because cases inside are mild. I definitely want to tell them when they call and ask, you know, have they been tested, you know, what the results are, you know, especially the ones that you know, are negative. You want to give them that ease, but we're not at liberty to release that information due to HIPAA. The detention center says transparency is so important right now because of COVID-19. That's why they're releasing the statistics of inmates who have the virus. Right now we have planned that we're going to 
uh, get more tests done on Wednesday for the ones that did po test negative, you know, but if they're in those same cells with the ones that tested positive, they still have a, you know, a high chance of testing positive themselves. Inmates and staff all underwent testing after some staff came back positive for COVID-19. As of the 18th, 63 of the 216 residents tested positive. 10 employees out of the 47 tested positive and one more employee tested positive this morning. Bennett says right now they're doing what they can to separate the positives and the negatives. So far, no one's been released for illness. Uh, that's that's all up to you know the judges to make those decisions if they're going to leave. And to this point, right now, no. But the judges have been notified of everybody that has been positive. 13 News reporter Ashton Jones met with 19-year-old Amy Joe to talk about the car wreck that changed her life. She didn't eat, say, a whole sandwich the whole week that she couldn't move. And thankful for every little accomplishment. Amy Joe hasn't been out of her bed since surgery. I know it's stupid to cry out, but like, I can't do anything. And I used to do everything. She was in a devastating car wreck in Butler County. Her mother says the driver of her car flipped the Jeep five or six times. Amy says she woke up to her body being jerked all around the car, then lying on the cold ground. And then they, had, they got me on the phone and I said, what's wrong with my baby? And they said, her back's broke. She can't walk. It took me a few hours to get back and I went to the hospital and I seen her. And she couldn't move nothing from neck down for six days. Her spine was shattered, but the Bowling Green Medical Center went to work to rebuild it. What we had to do was go in and remove the fractured part of the bone. Um, so essentially the whole vertebral body um, and place a cage in its and it's where that bone used to be. The cage was filled with ground donor bone and over time, it'll meld with her own. I told her, Amy Jo, after this surgery, walk one inch to me. If you walk one inch, you will make it. And that next day, she walked more than a foot. Amy's mother says this horrible accident has brought her family closer together. And she keeps crying, saying she's a burden because of my income and stuff. And I said, Amy Joe, you're not a burden. You're my baby. You're not a burden to me or to any of us in this house. And Amy Joe says it gave her the desire to live after a period of depression. In Bowling Green, Ashton Jones, 13 News.